All right, FAQ number 45. Why was God so cruel in the Old Testament? Here's another one that you're going to get, you know, another attack that atheists will, you know, use and other people that are lost and on their way to hell and don't like the Bible and are trying to get rid of the Bible. Um, they'll use this thing and they'll quote different stories from the Old Testament. and They'll say, oh, this is so cruel. This is so horrible. And this is the God that you serve. I won't serve a God that's so cruel. <laughs> it's like, okay, um, you're serving Satan, the God of this world, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. You know, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. You know, you, you serve him. You don't think he's cruel. You know, he's a good guy, I guess, right? And God's the bad guy. Sure, yeah. You know, follow that one. You'll see where it gets you. But uh, why did God do such, you know, why was there such killing and murder and, and all this other stuff back in the Old Testament? Well, just read the Old Testament. The Bible tells you. I'll show you a good example of this. Uh, Leviticus chapter 18 Leviticus 18, verse 22, we'll start there. It says, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Carried on in Romans chapter 1, the Bible says the same thing. So it's under the law here in Leviticus and also now today in the church age. Verse 23, Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things, for in all these the nations are defiled which I cast out before you. And the land is defiled, therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled." that the land spewed not you out also when ye defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore shall ye keep mine ordinance, that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God. Uh, there is a very simple thing. Uh, nature... You know, even if you want to take God completely out of the picture, which obviously I don't do as a Bible-believing, you know, preacher here, but, you know, even if you want to take God completely out of the picture, the natural world can only take so much wickedness from man. Man comes in and says, uh, we want to take, uh, we want to rape the land to get the, the goods out of the land, so we're going to do strip mining and blast, you know, high-pressure water into the side of the mountain. Oops, it's created mudslides and it goes down and wipes people's homes out or... We want to do hydro fracking and, and, you know, push chemicals down under the earth and, you know, create uh, fractures within the shale layers like they do down in Pennsylvania. And, and, you know, then we can get the gas out and then we'll just seal it up and everything's fine, uh, except for the fact that, you know, you're destroying the water system then. And my wife and I used to live in a place that was above old gas wells and our water was just absolutely terrible. It was clear. And within, when you'd bring it out of the tap water, and within uh, about, I'd say maybe 10 minutes, the water was yellow, bright yellow. Uh, so don't tell me, oh, that's that fracking stuff, that's gas land, you know, all this stuff. That's not true. Uh, yeah, it is. And you see, man, in his sin of greed, will destroy the environment. And what happens? The land vomits the people out. You can't live in those areas anymore. And with perversion, sex perversion, uh, you might not be destroying the environment per se, but what happens is you become so wicked and so filthy in God's sight, God says, okay, I'm just going to destroy you. And you see that with a lot of these sodomite you know, parades and everything else like that. There are tornadoes that will come in and do things. And you say, well, why would God do that to, to people? Why, you know, that's so cruel. No, you see, because perversion, the nature of perversion is it must continue to get worse okay it gets worse and worse and worse so you start out some guy says i want to fornicate with women then he says oh no i want to be i want to commit sodomite acts with other men then he says actually no i'm going to try animals and if you don't think bestiality goes on today uh, you are sadly mistaken you know uh, this thing that was passed i forget what the law thing was but they actually have you know if a pervert in the military now wants to 
have an animal there for those reasons, they're allowed to do that. I mean, you know, your rights are protected as, you know, for bestiality. It's disgusting. And what's the natural, you know, progression from there? You go to animals, next you go to children, small children, you know. I mean, it's just, that's the way perversion works. And so God, in an effort to protect the children, says, you know what, I'm going to stop that. And he goes and he says, okay, to the Israelites, go on in there. And those pagan people, they're doing all this wicked stuff. Go on there and just wipe them out. Sometimes they're not doing as bad of things. And God says, okay, you can spare the women and the children and whatever. Other times it's just, they're all bad. There's bestiality going on and there's all kinds of wickedness. God says, go in there, kill everything. Why? Because they're defiled. There's all kinds of diseases, you know. What about all the sexually transmitted diseases that are out there? You know, I mean, it's oftentimes God's mercy to, you know, what was going on there in the Old Testament. Go in there and wipe that stuff out so it doesn't spread out. You know, it's just a disgusting thing. But you see, this question, you know, why was God, you know, the God of the Old Testament, they'll say that, you know, like the God of the Old Testament's different than the God of the New Testament, you know. Read the book of Revelation sometime. You're going to see, you know, he's a lot more cruel in the coming time of Jacob's trouble than a lot of what was going on here in the Old Testament. It's the same God, by the way. But um, why is God so cruel sometimes? Well, these people are living in delusional fantasy land. Okay, Kind of like they're thinking to themselves, if we could just get rid of God, then things would be okay. Um, no, because those people that live without God or reference to God oftentimes are far, well not oftentimes, they are always more cruel than those who believe in God. All right, I mean, you, you want to see some violent murdering and death? Check out the communistic nations like China or Russia, you know, the nations that have had communism, that torture people that they don't agree with and do all kinds of horrible, terrible things. Now, these people that try to say that I won't worship God because he did cruel things in the Old Testament, uh, they're just not living in reality. They're not accepting reality. The reality is that man has never been any good and that man is prone to violence and greed and rape and every other bad thing out there. That's why the Bible, you know, the Lord looks down from heaven and he says, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that doeth good. We're all corrupt. But you see, self-righteous people don't like to accept that truth. Uh, so they'll come up with things like saying that God of the Old Testament is cruel and horrible and violent. Um, no man is cruel and horrible and violent. Right? And you say, well, then why would God allow such things? Because God, because God gives people free will. That's why. That's why God allows those types of things to happen. And you say, well, I still think God's cruel. Then why did he allow his son to die on the cross to pay for your sins? Why would he be willing to overlook the sins that you've committed and put them on his son? That's a sacrifice. That's called love. True love. You know, so don't tell me about God being cruel when you've rejected his son. That's insanity.